Hi, I'm Buddy Owens, one of the teaching pastors here at Saddleback Church. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video. I'm going to try to answer some questions you might be wondering about. The chances are you're watching this video because you were sitting in one of our services and the pastor gave you an invitation to pray a prayer to get your life right with God. And you just made a connection with God. But now you might be thinking, so what just happened? What did it mean? And what am I supposed to do now? Well, can I tell you something? That wasn't just a preacher you responded to. You were responding to God because he's been calling your name and tugging on your heart and tapping on your shoulder for a long time, wanting to get your attention just long enough to tell you that he loves you and that he wants to make something of your life that is far, far greater than you ever imagined. He's been waiting your entire life for this moment. And God has a plan and a purpose for your life that you're about to step into. But it all starts with a decision, a decision on your part where you say, okay, God, I, I don't know what it all means, but I want to put my life into your hands. I want to live the way you want me to live. And I want Jesus to be my savior. But now, what does that mean for Jesus to be your savior? Why do you need a savior to begin with? And save from what? And how does that happen? Well, I want to try to explain that in the next few minutes as we take a walk around the campus. Well, we all need a savior because we've all sinned. In fact, the Bible says that all of us have sinned and we've fallen short of God's ideal. We've fallen short of his plan for us. And because of our sin, our relationship with him has been broken because after all, God is perfect and we are not. And perfection and imperfection cannot coexist. So something had to be done in order to restore the relationship. Well, God knows that there's nothing that we can do to, to restore that relationship on our own. There's no amount of good deeds or good intentions. There, there's no cosmic scale where we can see if our good deeds somehow outweigh the things we've done wrong and you know, come out on, to our benefit. There's no way that we can earn our way into heaven. There's no way that we can buy our way into heaven. And yet the Bible says that a price has to be paid. And that price is death. Not your death, but the death of a sinless person. And so because God loves us, because God loves you, he sent Jesus Christ into the world to pay the price. Jesus lived a sinless life. And then he died on the cross to pay for our sins so that we could be forgiven and restored to God. And the Bible tells us that three days later, he rose from the grave just as the scripture said he would and just as history says that he did. He rose from the grave to prove that he is who he says he is. He's God in human form. He died for you and was raised from the dead to buy and pay for the forgiveness of your sins so that your relationship with God could be restored and then to give you the promise of eternal life with him in heaven. So the price has been paid by God himself and the way has been cleared. Now it's up to you. Well, the only way for you to get your life right with God is to do just two things, believe and receive. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and that he rose again from the dead for you. And then receive his gift of forgiveness and eternal life. That's it. There are no other hoops to jump through. There's no barriers to get over. There's no litmus test of behavior. It's just to believe and receive. You see, salvation is God's gift to you. It's a gift of his grace. It's not something that we deserve or earn. It's something he gives us because he loves us. And all you have to do is believe and receive. It's a, a simple act of faith where you come with an open heart and invite the Lord into your life. And to pray something, in fact, why don't we just pray right now? 
I'm going to pray here, and, and you can pray along with me. As I say these words, you repeat these words in your own heart. Let this be your prayer. Just say, God, I admit that I've sinned, and I'm sorry for that. But I also believe that Jesus Christ died for me and that he rose again from the dead for me. So now, Lord Jesus, I, I open my heart to you, I open my life to you, and I ask you to come into my heart and to help me to live the way you want me to live. Make me a new person. Make my life right with you. I'm, I'm tired of trying to do things on my own. I want to do it your way now. So I open my life to you, Lord, and I ask you to come in and to be my Savior. And I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, simply by praying a prayer like that, the Bible tells us that you now have a relationship with God that you never had before. You are now his son or his daughter. God is now your father. The Bible tells us in John 1:12, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And that is what you are. God loves you. He's not ashamed of you. He's proud to be your father. Your past is past. Your sins are forgiven. And you've just been given the greatest gift you'll ever receive, a whole new, fresh start in life with God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. You see, Jesus Christ now lives in you by His Holy Spirit. The Bible says when you opened your life to Christ, that God gave His Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, into your life to give you power and the strength to live your life the way God wants you to. And you're going to find that all kinds of things are going to start changing in your life. Old habits, old ways of thinking, uh, old uh, uh, attitudes, your, your view of the world, your values, the way you think about yourself, the way you think about God, the way you think about life, all of that is going to be changing. It won't all happen overnight, but day by day, moment by moment, choice by choice, God will begin working in you what, what, what has already been started as you opened your life to Christ, and that is the development of the character of Christ in you. You will find over time that you'll become more patient and more loving and more joyful as the character of Christ is developed in you. But it all happens through the power of God's Holy Spirit in your life. You can't do it on your own, but God promises to give you the power to make that happen in your life. It is an incredible gift that God has given you. It's a whole new, fresh start with Him. So we talked about what happened. You opened your heart to Christ. And we talked about what it means that you now have a fresh start in life. So now you may be asking, well, so what do I do next? How do I keep moving forward in the right direction? Well, it's important to know that spiritual growth is a lot like physical growth. It doesn't just happen all at once. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a, a lifelong process, one day at a time as God develops the character of Christ in you. See, there are habits and thought patterns and attitudes you've got that may have taken a lifetime to develop, and they're not gonna just disappear overnight. It's gonna take some time. But there are some things you can start doing right away to begin the process of spiritual growth, and that's reading the Bible and praying. So first, let's talk about the Bible. Why is it important, and how do I read it, and where should I start? The Bible is the Word of God. It is filled with truth and power. The Bible is also a love letter from God written just to you, and you can hear God speaking to you when you read it deep in your heart. Some people like to say that the Bible is like uh, an owner's manual written by the Creator to tell you how He meant for you to live your life. You see, the Bible doesn't just tell us the things God did. The Bible tells us how God does things and how He thinks. 
And the Bible says that it is the water, the milk, the bread, and the meat of the spiritual life. And just like you have to eat something every day to stay physically healthy, you also need to feed yourself every day on the Word of God to stay spiritually healthy. Well, there are several ways to read your Bible, and you don't have to read it from the very beginning straight through to the end if you don't want to. You, you can, but you don't have to. Because the Bible is actually a collection of 66 books. It is all the Word of God. And God can meet you in any book and on any page at any time when you're in the Scriptures. Now the Bible is uh, uh, made up of the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament contains the books that were written before Jesus Christ came. The New Testament contains the books that were written after He came. Each book is divided into short chapters and each chapter is then divided into short verses. Now, some books are harder to read than others. So if you're just getting started in reading the Bible, I suggest you start in the book of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, it's the first book in the New Testament. And it, it begins with a rather lengthy genealogy. It's a list of names of people going all the way back to Abraham up to the coming of Jesus Christ. And unless you go back and study who those people are in the Old Testament, it can seem a little like you're reading from the phone book. But starting at verse 18 of chapter 1, the story of the birth of Jesus begins to unfold. And from that point on, through the rest of the book of Matthew, the reading is absolutely breathtaking. You'll study, or you'll, you'll read all about the life of Jesus. You'll read about his, his teachings, his miracles, his death on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into heaven. Now, Matthew is only about 30 pages or so long, depending on how, how big your Bible is. But you don't need to read it all in one sitting. In fact, I would encourage you to take your time. Read it slowly. Read it with a pen in your hand. You can mark up the pages as you go. But take your time with it. And as you read, ask God to help you understand. Ask Him to be speaking to you out of His Word. Take your time. Think of it like having a conversation with somebody. You don't want to rush your way through it. You want to enjoy the process. You see, God has something to say to you every day, and He'll say it to you right here in the Bible. But God also wants to hear from you every day, and that happens through prayer. So you can think of Bible reading and prayer as two parts of a conversation. God talks to you through the Bible, and then you talk back to Him in prayer. But when you pray, you don't have to use any magic words or special phrases. You don't have to shout from the mountaintops. You don't even have to pray out loud because prayer is the language of the heart. And God will always hear you when you talk to Him. And you can talk to Him about anything. In fact, you should talk to God about everything. Tell Him everything that's on your mind. Talk to Him about your fears. Talk to Him about your dreams. If you mess up or sin, tell him about it. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to give you strength to help you keep moving forward. Talk to God about your family. Talk to him about your job and the people that you work with. Ask him to bless you. He's a blessing God. Ask him to bless you. And ask him how you can serve him. Ask him to show you things every day that you could do that would put a smile on his face. Pray about every detail of your life. Nothing is too small for God. Nothing is too trivial. I hear some people say, well, you know, you, you don't need to pray for me. I, I'm, I'm okay. You can pray for somebody else. And it's, it's like they think that there's only so much water in the well. God is, is all-powerful and always present and always willing to listen to our prayers. He loves us. He loves you. And He wants to hear from you every day. So pray. God answers prayer. In fact, He answers every prayer. But sometimes His answer is yes. Sometimes God's answer is no. And sometimes His answer is wait. You see, He doesn't always answer prayer the way we want Him to, but we have to remember that He's God and we are not. 
And we have to believe that God loves us enough to do what is best for us. Because the Christian life is a surrendered life. It's about letting God do what He wants to do in His timing. It's all about learning to trust Him. He loves you and He wants to hear from you in prayer. And it amazes me to think that the creator of the universe will listen to and will answer the prayer of even a little child. Because you see, it doesn't take huge, great faith to pray. It just takes childlike faith, simple faith, little faith. The Bible says faith the size of a, of a mustard seed. So just use the faith you already have and let God hear from you and pray. Now there's a third thing that you can start doing right away, and that is to keep coming to church. And if you live close enough to one of our Saddleback campuses, we would love to have you with us. But if you're too far away, then find another church. But be sure it's a place where they teach the Word of God in the Scriptures. It is vitally important for you to be hearing the Word of God being taught on a regular basis. You see, the church is, is not a club. And the church is not even a building. The Bible says that the church is made up of people. The church is the family of God. And just like a newborn child needs a family to help him or her grow and stay healthy physically, you also need a spiritual family, a church, to help you grow and stay healthy in a spiritual way. So be sure to get yourself into a solid Bible teaching church where you can hear the Word of God being taught and where you can develop friendships with other people who are following Jesus Christ. And as you faithfully read the Bible and talk to God in prayer and get yourself plugged into a church, into fellowship with other people who follow Jesus, you will grow spiritually. You will grow stronger every day. And if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call or you can stop by one of the Fresh Start with God tables after any of our weekend services, we would love to help you. Well, I want to thank you for spending these few minutes with me, and I pray that God will fill your life with joy and peace as you follow Jesus Christ. God bless you.